Hey, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be the grit, or the greatest. Hopefully, it's the greatest, but the latest edition of the grittiest take as we preview the Pittsburgh Penguins versus our Philadelphia Flyers. As Sidney Crosby is looking for number 500. Well, we'll look at Pittsburgh lines first. Crosby is with Brian Russ and Jake Gensel as his wingers. Evgeny Malkin is with Brock McGinn and Kasperi Kapitan with his wingers, former Flyers uh, son there. Dayton Heinen is uh, on the wing with Evan Rodriguez for Jeff Carter's line, former Flyer there. Zach Anton Reese on the left wing with Brian Boyle at center and Dominic Simon. Uh, Simone, excuse me, at right wing. Um, this Pittsburgh Penguins team uh, earlier in February was going through a little bump in the road during their great success, and now it's back to it's either a four or five game winning streak. They're firing on all cylinders, doing great things. Chris Letang's back to being one healthy and two the great Chris Letang. John Marino is one of the more underrated defensemen. Uh, Marcus Peterson's a very solid again. That, that line has two underrated defensemen on it, and then you have uh, Matheson, who's come from Florida and has now found success again after having bad couple of seasons at the end with Florida, um, and Tristan Yari is one of the Vezina candidates this year. Casey DeSmith is struggling, but is starting to make some inroads and find some better success of late uh, here little by little, so that obviously helps if you're the Pittsburgh Penguins. For our Philadelphia Flyers, uh, Oscar Lindblom is, center, or is centering, is on the wing with Cam Atkinson for Claude Giroux, and then the center, Scott Lawton, is the second-line center. He's going to have Van Reems like, and Konechny on his wings. Max Wilman and Jackson Cates are going to be on the wing for uh, Morgan Frost. I actually would have liked to see, uh, just because you're putting guys that are kind of similar, 6'1", 198, 5'11", 170, 6'190", according. I would have liked to honestly see Ratty Ratcliffe with how he's been playing in four games. He's looked pretty active on the ice. Move up just to have more size on that third line, but it is what it is because you already have enough size on the fourth line. You got Bunham and you have McEwen. Uh, you could have brought in maybe a cage to add a little bit more speed to the fourth line, bring up somebody to the third line that adds more size, and then it would have kind of made a little bit more functionality sense. But but that is what it is. That's what they have it as. Ivan Provorov, uh, Justin Braun is the defense line. Travis Sanheim, Nick Sealer, and then Keith Yandel and Kevin Connaughton. Uh, I'm definitely a hundred percent behind the people that are wondering why now Keith Yandel. Um, is not playing a good season. So it's Yandel, Sealer, and Canolden. I think because Sealer and Canolden are more seventh defenseman journeymen in their career, six, seven good minor leaguers, uh, they would be the odd man's out before you take Yandel out because the only way three guys would come out is if the Flyers do something that is unprecedented and I don't see them doing. I wouldn't mind if they do it and let the young guys play, but I don't see it happening is if they let Zamula, York, and Wyatt Wiley play at the same time. Then you can have Proveroff, Justin Braun, and Sanheim. Uh, if you keep Travis Sanheim through the deadline as the rest of your defenseman and then have those guys play in. But we'll have to see, excuse me, when what the Flyers are doing at the deadline, so that affects the defense. They obviously have Rasmus Ristolainen, who's going to be coming back, but uh, might end up getting moved uh, at the deadline and end up being flipped uh, for another pick or whatever they end up getting for him. So that's going to affect uh, who's in here and who's not. But in terms of playing Nick Seal or Yandel and Kanoa night in and night out, it's just not the right move. You should let the young guys play at this point, and I don't really understand the reason why. Um, <clears throat> I talked to Tony Andrakis, who does AHL, um, the great AHL reporter, while we were at the um, inside the AHL, while we were at the Phantoms game covering that on Sunday. And it could have something to do with the development and how the a NHL is kind of messed up right now and the Flyers can't figure it out. But at the same time, it's great. on the flip side, it's great to just let these guys get their feet wet, get active at the NHL level, get some games under their belt, and be able to figure it out there. Like they just brought up Morgan Frost. Morgan Frost was sick, so it made a little bit of sense why he was down. But these other guys should be up in the Yorks and the Zamulas. And then pretty soon Wyatt Wiley should be able to get his first game uh, because they are progressing in the right direction. And you might as well reward them because, one, you don't have other options. Uh, Sealer, Yandels, and Canons are not guys you have to keep playing because they're playing well every night because they're not. They're just uh, Sealer's probably doing the best out of all of them because what you're seeing mistake-wise is what you expect from him. He's a seventh defenseman. Uh, Canons supposed to be more of that guy that can be more of a functional six if you need him to be. That also is a good seventh defenseman. He hasn't been that. And then um, Yandel is just kind of a shell of what his former self was, just a fantastic teammate, great leader, and funny as dude to watch on a podcast, but not the same defenseman 
as he once was. So it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, this is more of just talking about the overall team and some of my frustrations and also what I think they should do, that it isn't necessarily the uh, game preview per se, 100%. But in terms of the overall game, I'm not predicting wins for the Flyers any much for damn sure. Uh, in order to have success against Pittsburgh like they do, usually PPG paints, uh, you have to play with the tenacity and with the um, care and uh, and give a damn that it seemed they played it in the second Detroit game where it seemed like they were putting in a lot more uh, effort. They were a lot more up in their skates and they were not just stepping back after there was anything going the wrong way. Everything just hit the fan. So if they can play with that, they'll have a better chance, but definitely ain't predicting a win. We'll have to see what this team does going forward. I think eventually you have to start just playing the other young guys because they have played some young guys. Obviously, they brought Bonham and back up to play fourth line center. He's in his 13th. He'll be in his 14th game tonight. Ratcliffe will be in his fifth game. They let him keep playing. Frost was down. Some of that might have been because he was sick. They brought Cates back up, who will be in his 11th game. Uh, Willman, who worked his way up from Reading to the AHL to the NHL, he, he will be in his 29th game. So they're letting some of the young guys play, but you should be letting our top prospects like the Yorks, the Zamulas of the world, and then one of these guys that might be a gem guy that you were able to get in Wyatt Wiley and start getting him some minutes. But everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Hope you enjoyed this preview such overall analysis on the Philadelphia Flyers. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy the game.